we're all here. Hi, I think this is it. Hello, everybody. How are you today? Great, thank you so much for coming. Welcome to Visiting Masters with Anthony Trianfo. Um, my name is Kate. I'm the Education and Community Engagement Assistant here at the Grand Park Music Festival. And Visiting Masters is such an incredible series. It's a way for young artists from great institutions, music schools, clubs around Chicago to be able to perform with one of Grand Park Music Festival's world-renowned guest artists. Um, I just want to take a moment to thank all of the students here, um, the Chicago Musical Pathways Initiative, Merritt School of Music, and the Chicago Flute Club for providing such incredible students for today's performances. Um, I'm just going to hand it over to Anthony before we introduce our first student. Yeah. I'm just... <laughs> so I don't know how many um, in-person master classes you've been to recently, but this is my second in two days, so I'm excited. <laughs> it's really exciting um, to be able to play in person again and to learn in this environment. It's definitely different than the Zoom or online. So I'm really looking forward to working with the students and um, I think we should just get started. So whoever is up first. Yes, um, our first student is Ella Wurstler from uh, Merit, or, yeah, Merit School of Music. All right, Ella.
Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Let me stop there. That was great. Let's just work on the cantile for a minute. That's great. Fantastic. Yeah, take a bow. Take a bow. So uh, I'd love to know a little bit about you, uh, your age, where you are in your flute journey, just all that type of stuff. Um, I'm 16 years old. Great. Uh, I've been playing since fourth grade, but I joined Merit in eighth. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's been it's been a long time. Yeah, it's been since then. And why this piece? Why are you playing this? Um, well, one, it's beautiful. It is beautiful. It's really it's really fun to play. Um, I guess I've I've been working with my uh, private lesson teacher on just trying to uh, really hit the the staples, and I mm -hmm. think that this is a really good place because. I like to play versatile pieces, sure. so this kind of this kind of does it all. Right, uh, exactly, me. exactly. And so when you're performing, I love that answer, by the way. So when you're performing, is this where you usually set up? Um, I've never really played or performed with piano before. <gasps> oh, this is so exciting! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then I can tell you everything that I want you to do. All right, so I would say generally, I I think um, you guys need to be collaborators. Uh, I do think in terms of projection and sound. I like to be, be in like the nook of the piano here, with this piano kind of low, and my head high. And then anything that you're doing with your, your flute body in terms of um, like a cue or anything, the, your, 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 um, your uh, collaborator will be able to, to, to find. And I also want to go, so let's do that maybe a little bit. And I always say you should be like a flute distance away from the stand as well. So a little bit farther. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, you might lift it a little bit, but we do want to see see your face. Not too. High. That's good. That's good. And now I want to. We'll go through what was going on in your mind when you first got up here and you tuned and you started. Um. Nervous? Just the first note, note after note, just thinking. <laughs> just thinking. Notes, notes, notes. <laughs> okay. Well, let's let's go with your tuning note. And I think for all of us, our tuning note is our chance to not only get in tune, but to also change the atmosphere of the space into the piece we're about to play. So I would love you to tune a little more carefully, and also in the same exact color that you want the beginning of this, of this to be, so that you're, you're starting in a place, you're actually setting yourself up um, in, a, in a more efficient way than tuning. Oh wait, now I need to change everything to get back in. So let me just hear how, how you tune again, and really listen carefully. say in general, and this is um, for most of okay, we're nice not so forte, but I think it's a pretty delicate piece, wouldn't you say? And when we're playing delicate, what happens to our pitch? It goes flat. It goes flat. So why work harder when you can work smarter? I would just push in way more than, you're, you're, uh, than you are right now. So that way you don't have to uh, work so hard to, to bring the pitch up when you're doing all these nice delicate things. So let's, let's tune again with this new position. And I would actually go in even a little more. Just, yeah. You want to, it's always, as they say, it's always better to be sharp than out of tune. That's, <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> Also fills the, the hall in a much nicer way. That was gorgeous. Now let me hear you do the uh, same thing, nice tuning with with vibrato. I was tuned with and without. Get a nice meaty sound. Your best sound right now. Okay, now the octave up. Good. Okay, so now let's now let's we're all tuned up. Let's go back from the beginning again. So what are some words that you use to um, describe this beginning? Um, I like to think of it like a song. Well, cantabile, right? Yeah, so it tells you what it wants. It's a song. Great. What kind of song? Um, just okay. one that's very, very full of emotion. I don't think that I can captivate it in one. Okay, yeah, there are a lot of emotions. All right, let's go back to the top. And I, as you're playing, I really want you to become inspired by the notes and what you're hearing. And I want to hear some more specifics, like this, this section is so-and-so. Maybe now we're transferring into so-and-so. It's really important, I think, to have this narrative as we're playing the piece, just to guide us, to, to ground us. All right, so let's, let's go nice back from the top. What kind of song is it?
so what, what was coming to mind up till there? Um, I I think it's not it's not anger, but it's it's definitely like someone is explaining something very uh, very specific. Wow. It has a specific sure, message. Sure, 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 sure. I like that. I like that. What I want. So then let's let's bring up a little more sound at the beginning, and I also want to do no vibrato right now. I feel like maybe um, the vibrato is impacting. Uh, your tone right now. So let's find a nice, nice core without vibrato, but with all of the same, the same uh, musical influence, right? Just nice. Find your core. What needs to happen is your air cannot really sway too far from what you just did. So when you add in the vibrato, that core of speed and accuracy needs to happen. So now let's now let's do both. We'll put them together for that same exact speed of air. Just a little bit of song singing. Gorgeous, it's uh, you know, everything you're saying, but our breathing apparatus still needs to kind of be in overtime because we have such long phrases to do. So anytime we're breathing, I would just breathe much more. Open your mouth a little bit wider, tongue down, right? Making sure everything's open and we can send everything down. Up. Um, a lot of people advocate for you know, belly breathing and make sure it all goes down there. Where we're kind of sim similarly built a little bit. It doesn't work like that for everybody. <laughs> so for me, um, I always find that uh, the, some of my best resonance comes from when I do breathe down low, but I allow my, my chest to really expand. And I think you can, you can tap into some of that as well. So let's take a nice, a nice slow, big breath, filling up to the beginning and then get into the first note. So you wanna fill up all the way. And also breathe into the context of the breathing piece though. much more active than, than we need or than you're doing right now. Okay. All right, try that. taking these big breaths, your sound got also much bigger. So we need to control taking in all of our air and then releasing only what we need so that we still don't run out. Um, but let's go, let's go from, 
Let's go from uh, just leading up into into here somewhere. And so we have Pianini, piano, right? Delicately. How, how, are we, how are we gonna do that? Well, you're gonna do it. I'm gonna hear it. That's what I want. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Softer, basically. Okay. a little bit more forward so you can get an effortless piano. What's wrong with it? I'm blowing. I'm thinking about blowing. Up, more up. Head up. And that'll, that will help. chance to, you know, take those risks or whatever. You were drawing in the audience. That was great. That was, that's exactly what we want all the time. And you really are, you really uh, elongated your crescendo from here to here. That was great. What control you have. Okay, so now let's go to here, which is basically what, what's going on, um, maybe technically, when that part comes. It's a variation on the beginning. see in here that you're trying to get the octave with um, the speed, which is a great place to start, but now let's add also a little bit of flexibility in our armor show. Maybe find it. Go. Not, I don't know how much movement there was. Some, right? For sure. Maybe a lot. I don't know. But we just need that flexibility. So you want to, it's almost as if you're playing all the notes in between. space between the two octaves. There it was, do it again. Now can you do it and back off on your air 10%? Yeah, exactly. All right, great. So now let's, let's do it as written um, with, with the piano. So nice steady air sending it to the back all the time, nice and relaxed. Sorry, one more time. Also, if you lean more on the lower note, the, the top one will kind of, it's like a trampoline, right? So, more, more, more pressure on, the, on those bottom notes to let the top just flip out. softer. 
after high note. That was good though. Okay, try that. We, we want it to be nice and smooth. Not steps. points. You said this is a conversation about saying something, right? That's definitely more. You're saying something. I don't know what it is, but it's just finger pointing. Okay? Maybe some tough family love. I don't know. Um, from the, okay. let's, let's get into it um, so you can really prepare the breath. Um, honestly, I wouldn't mind doing all of this again. Can somebody let me know when we have like two minutes left? Thank you. Thank you. Big change. Um, I also like to kind of, um, you'll hear. This movement, I believe, this mm -hmm. high B flat, right? So you want that to be special. I think that's what it is, almost. So really, just being able to soar. So set yourself up earlier by starting softer here. Start wherever you like.
good, good. So this is a slow, a slow movement. So even anything, yes, we have 30 seconds, right? One, two, three, four, 64, yeesh. Um, but still, nice cascade, you have time. Uh, The most uh, virtuosic things are things that you can hear all the notes of. So take your time. And so forth. Okay, let me just hear you by, by yourself. Really enjoy the run. Do it backwards. Uh, oh, naturals. Anything technical, you should be able to play it front and back, especially for practice. It just does. Okay, thank you. Let me hear you. So now, we've, we've done it backwards, now let's do it forwards again. <laughs> is actually um, between the, the F and the E flat is, is not changing enough, I don't think. So let's pick a note that you can ground on. What would that be? Uh, the G probably. Yeah, I think so too. Um, it's honestly a very, it's all, it's just, it's just super, I think you can, you can do it. <laughs> okay, right there. Good. And that's, the, that's just the type of intense focus that you're going to need to do in your practice room. And then eventually, you know, day by day, we get, we get where we want to get. But that's, that's kind of what I would suggest. Um, I know we're out of time, but I do want to hear you play this super slow. Play it at a tempo you know you're not going to mess up at all, but with a gorgeous sound. And finish? Can you finish the movement together? That would be great, thank you. control. Great job, great job, really good. <laughs> Allow yourself to just practice really slow and nail it every time. That's it. You, it's so efficient and you know, then you sound good all the time. <laughs> so great job, great job Ella. Yeah, thank you, thank you. All right, starting the day off, great. Thank you so much Ella, that was beautiful, all right. From Merritt School of Music. Yes, Ella from Merritt. Um, one more time for Ella. <laughs> Our next performer is Caitlin Shen from the Chicago Blues Club. All right. Welcome, Caitlin. Caitlin. Hi, how are you doing? So, are you going to tell us what you'll be playing today? Great. And age? I'm 14 and I started playing in fourth grade. Okay, great. Fantastic. So um, I know it's always kind of, uh, I hate playing in master classes, not first, because you're just sitting there, right? And then you get up and you're like, oh gosh. So take a moment uh, to get comfortable in the space before beginning. <laughs>
All right. Aren't we all, right? <laughs> so that's, I mean, so, okay, let's answer this question now. What is the mood of, of this? Um, it's energetic and exciting. 
Yeah, exactly, exactly. Energetic and excited. It's also what kind of what type of piece is this? Um, I'm not sure. But is it Baroque? Oh, well, yes. Oh, <laughs> it's a concerto. Yeah, it's a concerto. Um, so you have a very beautiful, delicate sound, and I think we can do a lot to enhance as if there was an orchestra behind you, so you can fill this hall with all of, all of the things you have to say, totally. So that's what I, I really want, want to work on. Okay, so first, um, is your teacher in the audience? Yeah. Great, fantastic, mm -hmm. wonderful. So let's go from, let me just hear you by yourself. Let me hear you get, um, so this is the, your first note, right? Imagine there's an orchestra behind you, and you have to, you have to get your sound out there. So let me just hear you do nice, nice G in style. Okay, so we want to take a ooh, we want to take a nice uh, longer breath in general, and we want it to set up everything here. So you're already envisioning the sound you want, have, and your breath. Um, there needs to be. There's no adjustment, but between between like the opening of the mouth and the and the blowing of the air. Does that make sense? So wh when you're thinking of uh, what's going on inside your mouth when you're making your your best sound. Mm -hmm. mm-hmm mm -hmm. exactly so that's the exact type of shape we need when you breathe and allow yourself to just breathe in for a longer time so you can settle it's closer there's also this um, I also say that our, our body needs to be completely set up there is this little like you know you want your 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 stance to already be tall willing to accept the air right and then you take it. Mm -hmm. So try that. Already nice up tall, like there's like a ribbon on your head. Still a little bit of a, hey guys, so get nice and tall, breathe in slower. And send your air all the way to the back. Closer, and now there was this, um, <laughs> now there's like a little, which is good. Do you play in like band or orchestra? Probably. And that's in, it's important to be able to do that in the band and the orchestra. I don't think it helps for, for our solo playing like this. So just be nice, nice and stable. That's what I'm talking about. Do that again. And now let's see if you can get your air to reach all the way to your foot joint. Now without vibrato. Oh, without, and hold it for a longer time. Really, I want you to, it's like, do you long tones? Do we do long tones? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's do a nice long tone on G. And when you're doing your long tones, you wanna actually, if you're not liking exactly what you're hearing, move around the air until you're, you find that je ne sais quoi, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. With your, Maybe lift your head up a tiny bit and lower, lower your flute on your face a little bit so that um, it's less on your bottom, less on your bottom lip and more in the nook of your chin, just a little bit. Do you hear a difference there? It's definitely starting to get a little bit of edge. I know you can get a little bit more. So let's not be afraid to uh, make your air um, same speed, but much more volume of it. So maybe open this up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You're getting there. That's good. Now, that is a concerto sound for me. Good. Now let's go to the top. So same thing. And actually for this exercise, no vibrato right now. So nice. What, what did you just do to get that, actually? Um, I think I relaxed. Ooh, relaxing always helps, right? Good, great. Okay, let me hear you do it again one more time so I know it wasn't a mistake. Okay, good, great. Now we'll go from the top again. That's, that's your sound you just start with, and it needs to be very, um, you know, it's, it's Baroque. So very regal, very, uh, mm -hmm. bum, bum, ba -da -da. I am little, little. Pump, okay. Right where you right where you come in, no vibrato. 
focusing on that nice sound you just got, sending it all the way in this space. More, 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 more. Don't back off, don't back off, it's okay. So where are we going? This this first phrase is uh, sets up the whole thing. What's what's important? Where what's the phrase like? Where's our high point, low point? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So we need to lead there. It's very it's very straightforward. So if we're going up, likely crescendo through, and if we're um, going down, decrescendo through. I want you to really exaggerate those. So. Just sing over the top. A little, um, sequence and it's basically when any motif repeats again going up or down in order and that's exactly what that is right and there's a lot of them in this music there's a lot of them and with it's very easy for um, for the music to lose momentum when we have them so we need to be able to a identify them and then B every time there is um, you know every time the sequence comes back or repeats or we're going up we need to there's steps. We either need to bump up or bump down the intensity or make some sort of change. And so what do you, so I would suggest, let's start maybe mezzo piano. Oh, that's not, yes it is, no it's not. Yeah, start maybe mezzo piano here, and then when we get to the next one, let's see. And we're also in minor, so we can be a little easy. so beautifully like in a bubble I want to pop the bubble so that your sound is really focusing on the people in the back and filling up the space behind you 360 360 sound okay let me just hear you do that by yourself your most singing sound drop drop the tongue um, for the D especially But way more air. This is our, our climax. Good. Can I can I do it again? I'm gonna hold your flute. Nice, nice stick. Nice big breath. The sound is clear. And now a little bit lower in your face, but still head up. That was, that was my favorite. Yeah. Did that feel weird? Yeah, I mean it felt different, but I think. You heard it, yeah, right. So I, I think it was it mostly moving the lip plate down or what? Uh, yeah, it was moving. And also, I think also the stability of just it's it's a really it's a habit that all flutists we need to kick this type of thing. It needs to be used 
with great power comes great responsibility, right? Uh, we can, it can't be our, our obvious, because it adds turbulence to our airstream that we don't need. Um, that, but that, yeah, that was, that was the best one by far. Let me hear you do that again. So nice, steady, a little lower on your face. Don't be afraid to make the sound. And we'll keep going if it's good. where we have a lot of the same stuff going on, right? But in different keys. So each one needs to be different. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I want to hear it. And do it by yourself, actually, so you can um, experiment. Here, when you're getting these technical passages, your air is slowing down quite a bit. So the, the the air and the fingers and the brain, your brain needs to separate the two. A lot of the times, our air is um, in conjunction with our fingers. You know, we, we don't want that. The air always needs to be really steady, and we our fingers need to be separate. Yeah, like so. Actually, that that's good. So a thing that I practice a lot is, um, you know, you pretend that the flute. Well, you put it up to your face like you're going to play, but not on the armature, and you you finger correctly, but you just blow right. What, whatever the notes are, and you want to be listening so that one, yes, your fingers are accurate, but two, you have this solid, solid airstream, an audible airstream as well. Mm -hmm. If it's not audible, you're probably not putting enough um, air into the flute for me. So let, let me let's try that. Start off great, right? You it start out and then it, so do that again, do that again, and you really, yeah. The whole time you're telling your brain, brain, blow. Now let's do it with the flute, just by yourself. you guys hear there? You got some nods. Yeah, you're able to fill out the intervals much more. Now let's add some music into it now that we got the... So let's see, big... Let's see. Hmm. I would say we come down there. there. Keep going. Um, Starting from, yeah, there. really technical sections and these really lyrical sections, wouldn't you say? And so for each of these, for example, like I think these are pretty lyrical. Um, so whenever we have these, are really bring them out, almost Mozartian. So sing, mm, sing. Just sing. And then when we get those technical things, get right back into the groove. It's always going back and forth between these two. That keeps it interesting. 
the opposite. I think I think the corners should always be a lot of people say frowning. I think they for me I think it works best when they're neutral. Um, but definitely we, we want to av always avoid any sort of back and up, especially for our learners. So let's go slowly. Um, and slow. see that you're working, which is great. So now I'll do the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And this will be for your, for your own practice. Let's keep going together. We all, and this actually has happened a couple, happens all the time with everyone. Um, breathe longer, or else the first note will chip if we don't think about it. Actually, oh, this is being recorded, huh? Okay, I'll, I have a, fun, a great story after, but um, <laughs> about cracking flute notes. It's very appropriate, but anyway. Uh, um, let's go, so, you know. You need to you need to be at the point where you can just take a breath and go. So it takes it just takes a little more, a second more of breathing in and placing the embouchure before you start. Always, whether it's practice in the orchestra, rehearsal, band room, you know. Okay. Oh yes, great. But now let's do it in. The Say, uh, so these notes are obviously uh, spooky notes. So um, I would really lean on them. Those are the juicy notes. and over the keys, always. Um, it's going to feel it. Let's do it again.
it again, and then on the F sharp, stop, and check your fingers. That's what I do in my practice room. Um, constant stops. OK, same place. <laughs> to be as relaxed always as possible and anything that like comes up too far is uh, inviting intention that we don't need and you're 14 right mm -hmm. it'll get ya it's, it's <laughs> so we always want to ease the tension um i thought you sounded great 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 work keep it up so lower lower on the lower on the chin right nice stable here longer breaths with nice posture and just allow yourself to make some sound but you sound beautiful thank you so much for playing thank you. Miguel, so uh, what are, same questions, How? what's your age, what's your flute journey like? Um, so I'm 18, just turned 18 last month. I'm going to be a freshman next year at Northwestern University. Nice. Um, I've been playing flute since I was in fifth grade. Okay, and you're playing some Mozart. Yes. Oh, indeed. Fabulous. So like I like I said to yeah, take a take a moment to oh, get okay. musical space.
So moving on, that's fantastic. <laughs> okay, so Mozart, what, are, what, what comes to mind when you're thinking about this piece? And what, what do you like, what do you not like, what's hard, what's easy? Uh, I, I'm thinking a lot about tension and release mm -hmm. and Apoggio Torres and making sure I'm taking um, care, or I'm, I'm aware of where the Apoggio Torres are and making sure I'm leaning where I'm supposed to. Great, great, fantastic. And I, I can definitely hear that. And I think we can um, definitely work together to have a little bit more of a Mozartian style uh, because yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot going on. So I'm going to um, just a few, a few quick things. Anytime, anytime we have. Um, well, actually, I, I just want to hear you go from the beginning by yourself. <laughs> um, we'll get there. Yeah. Uh, okay. So let's do it all slurred ones. Are you doing real fingerings? No, I'm trying to let go on the C sharp to not not move my right hand. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let okay let's do that and keep going. Yeah. As written. Good. Um, now with piano, and this time I'm gonna I'm gonna stop you more. stopping in between the articulations a little bit. Can we do, um, can I just hear you do this? Yeah, low notes, that's right. <laughs> uh, slur. Right, if you give the low A's, each low A its own well, it's its own, no, it's, it has its own identity. We don't want to rush over it. Really ground yourself on all of them. That's nice. So let's now do it as written, but I, same thing. Don't be afraid to push your air through, your tongue through the air. Much lighter, much lighter. Only one taste bud, really. Da -da 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 -da. Barely flicking your mouth. That's, that's, that's much better. But now let's do it a little bit slower so that you can um, really try to fill out the bottom as much as possible. Sometimes people like to add a right. echo. Good. And so that, that was nice. And if I was practicing this and I was you now, I would say, Can, let's do it again, but now smooth it out so that there's no bumps. But you can't revert back to the air you had before, right? Right, that's, that's, that's what we want. 
Um, okay, let's let's keep going. Yeah, from B. And I hear actually. Okay, I'll, have, I'll hear you play it again. <laughs> Sorry, I have so many. No, it's good. Wait, with with piano. Or? Sure. <laughs> Exact opposite. Um, uh, come, come away from the downbeat like that. We don't. I mean, it's just not very Mozart to have. Especially, it's not natural to to our flute. Uh, I think it's important for Mozart and music like this to have your dynamics be a little bit more um, natural. So, like low, lower notes, they don't need to pop. For example, everybody goes like, what? What is that? Who? No one cares. <laughs> It's much more beautiful. Yeah. So same thing. That's where we open up. Also another thing, so. Anytime we have the, it's very easy, and it's like if you want to play for an audition or a competition, anytime we're going from slurred notes to an articulated note, you need to lift it and uh, articulate the following note more okay. than you think, or else it'll just sound like one note. Right. Flute players are already known for not having clear articulation anyway, so we want to prove them wrong. <laughs> Okay, right there, so.
sorry. <laughs> Everybody hears that, right? Um, um, that was good. So let's go back to. Brahms one. So, so I'm actually going to suggest the same thing a little bit lower on your face, just a tad bit. And then also moving a bit forward so it's at a little bit of an angle. Yeah. That's actually really nice. And now drop the tongue. Same thing. Another thing for our for our biggest sounds, I think, um, I think of blowing very slow, warm air rather than mm. than uh, fast and cold, and uh, but a lot of it. So. Make the space between the roof of your mouth elongated. So it's like lifting the soft palate almost. Oh, let go. Oh. Mm -hmm. Now what happens if you're not afraid of like how much air you're putting into it? Do you crack? Mm, well, I have a splitty, so maybe not. No. All right, well, let's put that splitty to work. You paid for it. Why don't you do that? That's great. <laughs> That's what we want. That's that. Was that a lot more air than you usually use, or no? Well, yeah, because then it still goes a little bit sharp. But oh, one step at a time. <laughs> Better sharp than flat. Yeah. But seriously, no. That, that that's the type of tone you want. Okay. Um, same thing. You know, this is a concerto, and of course, you play it in other settings. But at the end of the day, it's the flute's piece to shine. Okay, let's keep going. Same place, and we'll keep going. Do I really want? Yeah, hit that nice big tone. <laughs> This is one of the da -da 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 -da, one of our tricky parts, and it's like I can tell you're concentrating because you're like, you know, you didn't sound like that. You sound good. But uh, what if you do the opposite instead when we're getting? Allow yourself to just come taller. It also creates. You don't want that air right. with here. Right. All of it. All of it. Right. So always up. Relax. Okay, go a little bit before. the two I think is the best. Yeah. For example, even the 
the little Drake's note at the beginning? Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. Okay, let's keep going, though. That's just for you. <laughs> You'll remember that, I'm sure. Okay, let's keep going. I also, I actually do the opposite here. So, yes, low, but then still piano, so then we can really lead through oh, to okay. these. So. to breathe. I actually take, cat that's why I also like this, so you can take some catch breaths, but it's because you have to do all of that in breath. Yeah. I did, yeah, you have to have air left over. So start, some catch breaths, start soft, and then you can really have that crescendo. Opposite for practice purposes. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather have that than this. Okay. We'll try again. Try again. Yeah. So the key is yes, they're fast breaths, but we still have to take in as much as we can. More than you think. Always more. Always more than you think. Every breath is first breath before prelude to the afternoon of a font. Every breath. Every single breath. I cannot stress that enough. Every single breath. Okay? Sorry, that was intense. But... <laughs> That's the interesting part. A little sparkle to the... Concerto compared to the G major because there's so much you can do with it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Quirky, 
repeat. Can you have more fun? Mozart, you know, in addition to being a genius, he was also a normal person. Uh, if you've ever read any of his letters or his um, correspondence, he was like a really funny guy. He thought he was funny. Uh, so anytime you can find humor in any of Mozart, uh, you know, bring it out because I do truly believe that if he was here today, he'd be a composer that was like, yeah, it's fine, just do it. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> seriously, seriously, I really do think, I do believe that. And, um, so yeah, find those moments of lightness, humor, storm, and drum, right? It's all opera. Yeah. Comic opera. Anyway, your cadenza. Less familiar with the cadenza? A little bit, yeah. Okay, I can tell because your air, you sound timid. So let's not be timid. Okay. If there's anything I want everybody to take away from this masterclass, it's just like flow. Don't be afraid to make sound, <laughs> make a mistake. Especially, this is a cadenza. Frankly, if you make a mistake, no one's gonna know because, you know, it's a cadenza. You're by yourself. So let's, let's play it again. More whimsy. Um, if there's a wrong note, who cares? But I, I really just want to hear artistic conviction in what, everything you're doing.
Okay, I can have some. Have this, I, I kind of think here, so. Whatever it is, yeah, send it off. And wait longer. Wait, make the audience like, oh, <laughs> uh, almost on the edge of um, awkward silence. See how long you can wait, really. Make the listener like, what's going on? Fantastic. I just want to hear you do this a little. Who wrote this? John Song. It's, n it's a nice cadenza. Yeah, it's I, not too bad. <laughs> yeah, I haven't heard this one. You want to end 2D forte. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say, and also don't worry about getting, it's more of like a whip. Just like let it, let the air like a heart. With a nice long, long note, last note for sure, right? Yeah. Well, you sound fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Good job. Thank you all so, so much. Thank you, Miguel, again. I'm just going to give another big round of applause to all of our artists. Thank you to Matt Pekka Media for recording today's performances. Um, you can find them, uh, this one online at gpmf.org next week, as well as our previous master classes. Um, thank you so much to our fabulous pianist, Daniel Schloss. Very good. <laughs> um, again, thank you to Chicago Musical Pathways Initiative, the Chicago Flute Club, and Merritt School of Music, um, and the teachers of uh, our performers who are here today for for providing your amazing students to perform in this master class. And then last but not least, thank you so much to Anthony and Rianto for being here today. Thank you for watching the Grant Park Music Festival's Visiting Masters program today. You can find all of our master classes online at gpmf.org. We hope to see you again soon. <laughs>